Hello you and welcome to the movies! No wait, welcome to Planet Coaster, but it's the- oh I don't know, I'm getting all mixed up. Our games are melding into one, this is Planet Coaster. Uh, this is a new series here on the channel where we are going to build a studios style park. I know I'm not the only one, I know there's other people doing it, but uh, I just want to use the studio stuff. I'm genuinely psyched for this expansion. Uh, or the DLC, whatever you want to call it. Because um, as much as I've loved Spooky and Adventure, I feel they haven't they they haven't just sort of like lit the fire in my belly quite as much as this one has and one thing i really struggled with was with adventure was uh, we were really heavy into pinewood hills uh, a very british budget park and all the adventure stuff was beautiful tropical uh, over the size top temples and things and i just couldn't use any of it so i thought uh, studio came out and again kind of the same thing happened apart from the backstage stuff you know all the new rides and stuff these robo arms and stuff it's all nowhere near the budget that pinewood hills would have so i thought you know what? i'm not letting it happen again i'm gonna make a second park you know subnautica's coming to the end now so rather than picking up a third game i'm just going to dive back into planet coaster heavy for a bit so we're going to be having two series ongoing uh, pinewood hills is going to still be every friday and this geekism studios uh, is going to be every other week every day one day every other week i don't know uh, one also once a week as well but on a different day than friday maybe twice a week for a couple of weeks while i'm really just sort of hyped about the studio pack you know um anyway that's enough of that let's dive into what we're doing so uh this reference here very much wears its heart on its sleeve i, I post an early preview shot of this when we were waiting for the expansion to come out somebody on the bro nation discord uh, was like oh is that like a little bit inspired by universal studios i was like it's inspired it's a complete rip off of universal studios so yeah if this was built in real life Universal would be down on me like a ton of bricks with a lawsuit. Uh, this is very much uh, inspired by Universal Studios, specifically Universal Studios Florida, uh, the entranceway, and also this um, this thing I'm building here, uh, which is like a, a world, a globe. Uh, the Universal one is actually a globe. It's got like a steel pieces that make up a map and you can see uh, you know different countries and stuff. We've just gone for more of a generic globe here because uh, you know, our channel doesn't really have anything to do with world or anything like that you know whereas obviously universal's logo is the world so that kind of makes sense um so yeah really here my thinking behind this is i want to go big budget but still bearing realism as mind as much as possible you'll see something i'm going to build in a little while uh really probably takes realism a little bit too far uh but yeah you'll see something in a moment but i really want to go for big budget uh, i want to go and use all the sexy tropical foliage that we got in the adventure pack that we never got really much use out of in in pinewood and um just kind of use this series as a uh, almost like an uh, like an, an antidote to pinewood if that makes sense I, I have so much fun in pinewood hills building british park these sort of parks that i've grown up with um but budget and you know uh temperate climate and all this sort of stuff means you're limited in what you can do and here i'm still limited but in a different way so here the limitations are everything's got to be amazing and big and bright and beautiful and uh, and all that sort of stuff so it's going to be a nice uh, challenge that sits alongside pinewood hills and, I, and hopefully the two of them will work and it work in tandem quite well and, and kind of owe each other stuff as well so uh, that's kind of the idea i know for a fact that rudy is working on camel studios uh, i know masked bandit has started bro nation studios although whether or not that ends up being more than a live stream i don't know i'd love to see him carry on with it um because i'm, I'm really psyched for this pack i know uh, so far everyone seems to be pretty happy with it uh, i know personally a couple of people who aren't too fussed on it to be honest with you um i know what uh, i know uh, one person who said that it's only really any good for dark rides and whilst i agree a little bit obviously the rides the new rides that we've got are meant to be dark rides i think the actual uh, just the back lot elements that we've got and uh, and just the new city building pieces i think are going to be able to create great main streets and great back lots all the sort of stuff that i want to try and do here uh, and also in pinewood as well so let's talk a little bit about what we're doing here in Geekism Studios. Uh, I'm raising the ground up here, and this is because I want infrastructure to be a big part of this park as well eventually. Uh, in Pinewood, infrastructure is something we've taken into account. And when I talk about infrastructure, I mean actually people getting into the park. So uh, with Pinewood, we've still very much gone for the... Um, 
here's a tunnel in the corner of the map and people walk through it. And I'm going to try something a little bit fancier here. And again, I'm going to try something very much like Universal Studios in Florida. Um, they have a huge parking lot on one side of a highway. And then you actually make your way across a huge, um, a huge bridge across the highway that then takes you into their sort of entrance plaza and also an area that they have called City Walk which is loads of restaurants and, and hotels and bars and things like that and then from there you actually enter the park or there's two parks now there's also Islands of Adventure and there's Volcano Bay although I'm not too sure how you get into that because it was still being built last time we went um, and that's something I want to try and do here as well I don't really want just people walking through a tunnel this has got to be a bigger deal this because it's a bigger park so uh, we're going to get a highway in uh, in between these two raised areas. It's all very much a work in progress at the moment. They're just sort of basically islands at the moment, but eventually it'll be worked in. We'll have a big highway going through using all those new cool vehicles that we've got. And then we'll also have a big parking lot. Uh, we're going to summon the spirits of Uthris and build a parking lot. And then we're also going to do a bit of a city walk style area as well. There's going to be lots of food outlets and also hotels because hotels are a new thing that we've got in the game now as well, uh, where people can go into the TARDIS and come out more refreshed. There's a little bit of a debate as to whether or not it's a very nice uh, implementation, the hotels in the game. Personally, it's about as much as I expected. Um, would I have liked to have seen more interaction with the actual guests? as in being able to place down a swimming pool that they jump in, being able to place down some beds, being able to place down, uh, you know, spas and gyms, of course. Do I think that's a little bit out of the uh, scope of the game? No. Do I think it's a little bit out of the scope of a £7 DLC? Definitely. So I think what we've got is pretty much exactly as I expected. Um, it uses the same sort of tech that we've got with staff rooms and toilets. They go in, they come out, and their numbers have changed. And that's really, I think, personally, all we could have expected. Um, so we've added some water to the um, to the globe here now, and uh, that water actually becomes a real part of this opening uh, sequence that you'll see in a moment, using these awesome path pieces. One of the things I've noticed with this Studios pack is it, a lot of the stuff in it, as good as it is, we've already got it. But we've got it that we've made ourselves, and we're going to be able to go back into our parks and save ourselves a good 10 to 15, maybe even 20, 30 percent uh, park counts, basically, because we've now got pavements that I've been using in Pinewood and building really awkwardly, uh, traffic cones, cars, uh, dustbins, boxes, vans, and there's so much stuff that we've been building out of art pieces that we can pretty much go in, rip out and replace with the uh, with the you now in-game stuff. Uh, not necessarily that it looks better, but uh, you know, often it does. The, the stuff that they made is great, but you know, the stuff that we made I think looks pretty good as well. But not only does it look better, it it's um, it's obviously going to help frame rate. Uh, the other thing there as well, these new pavement tools um, so as part of the terrain editing, you can now set the terrain to be concrete or tarmac. I've chosen one of each on here because I think it'd be quite useful. Um, the tarmac isn't as useful actually because it looks nothing like the closest path we have to tarmac. The good thing about this, excuse me, the good thing we have about this concrete path, uh, paint, sorry, is it's pretty close to the path. I don't know why it's not the exact same because surely that's why it's going to be used. Uh, but it's pretty close, close enough to fill in little gaps. You'll see on that large plaza area, I've done it a few times already. Uh, and it's again, it's going to just be saving on park counts because at the moment we're we're dropping floor pieces into the ground and you know getting it so it's just right and it just sits right. And unfortunately, if you zoom out enough, it, it clips and. You know, just loads of little quality of life features that we've got with both 1.6 and Studios Pack. Um, and that's basically, that's what Friday's Pinewood Hills is going to be. Uh, basically me going through Pinewood Hills, taking out some of the custom stuff, replacing it with the new stuff, and also just sort of filling out the backstage areas, filling out the car parking area, all that sort of stuff with the new uh, Studios Pack. So here, I, I don't think this is what Universal do, but for some reason it just felt right. And that is to have a, a sort of flowing fountain down into... Uh, the water here. One thing this, pa this pack has got a lot of is movement uh, in between the adventure, the uh, animatronics, sorry, uh, the moving lights, the ability to change um, colours of things using the new triggers and the ability to stop people and stop uh, track rides and stuff. Uh, there's a big shift of movement in the game, which I think is fantastic because it's one thing I've always found uh, with especially some scenes like dark ride scenes and stuff. The game needs to be a little bit static. So it's great to see some uh, some more options for us to be uh, developing movement in, in rides. And, um, and I think that's something I want to try and continue to go uh, through the park is movement. So uh, lots of water flowing, lots of uh, 
uh, sort of you know trees in the breeze and things like that I really want to try and make movement an important part of it and also I think that's an important thing to do with this kind of studios part because the buildings can be a little blocky I mean really uh, once you pass the main street the idea behind a studios park is that you're going into various studio uh, hangars you know so you go into the hangar and the rise in there and the right and the hangar is themed on the outside a little bit but for the most part the idea is that you go to lot one for this ride you get a lot five for this ride studio parks have kind of shifted away from that in more recent years but uh, i want to go for a little bit more of a traditional idea in that uh, you're going in here and you're being part of the movie or, or um, you're going in here and being part of the game which is the next thing i want to talk about the actual theming behind the rides that we're going to be doing here in the geekism studios um i've mentioned this already on the live stream and a few other places as well but if you haven't seen those uh, basically what we're going to be doing is each ride in the park is going to be based on a video game that we have played on geekism so um some of them lend themselves really obviously so we're going to be doing a backlog studio tour based around the movies uh, which is a fantastic simulation game an older simulation game that we've been playing on the channel. Uh, we're going to be using the new Robo Arm ride to create an underwater dark ride uh, themed around Subnautica. We've got some really great ideas for how to use those new screens alongside that as well. And then um, we're going to be doing a uh, sort of, I've not quite decided on the type yet, but I want to do a coaster based around surviving Mars. So I'm going to do some sort of probably indoor coaster or maybe a little bit half and half uh, or maybe a completely outdoor coaster, something like. Uh, uh, rip, rock, rip Ride Rocket, you know, at Universal Florida, um, but I want to theme it around Surviving Mars, so I want lots of sort of Mars landscapes, and we'll even try and build some of the, the dome structures from the game uh, uh, you know, that we can fly past um, Izzily on uh, Twitch has did a great job of that the ones I'm going to be doing are probably going to be a little bit smaller but she did a really awesome job where she merged Surviving Mars and Planko together while she was waiting for the studio's pack to launch it turned out really well here, what am I doing? Uh, it's a bit weird. It's probably not how it would work, but I wanted to do some uh, gubbins, so to speak. I wanted to do some sort of backstagey stuff. So here is a huge water tank uh, that you can see getting filled up, and that is the water tank that provides the water for the fountains. Again, it, this wouldn't work like this at all. It would be covered up, of course, but it gave us the use of those chain link fence. It gave us the use of some walkways. It gave us a nice sort of juxtaposition between the uh, you know the backstage and the uh, the, the front. Uh, one thing I love about theme parks, and it's something we haven't done with Pinewood because it just doesn't happen with smaller budget parks, but one thing I love about the higher budget theme parks is this idea of a swan on a lake. And if you look at the swan from from uh, the water level and up. Uh, it's incredibly graceful, this beautiful creature that glides across at the greatest of ease. But if you look underneath the water, his legs are going 10 to the dozen and kicking and, and, and splashing. And uh, the idea is that underneath, backstage, there's all crap going on, there's rubbish around, there's there's a plane coming in and all all sorts. But out the front, it just looks beautiful and serene and, and, uh, and really well themed. So I want to try and get that idea across and it might mean that sometimes the backstage here is a little bit over the top like it is with this water tunnel like I say that water would be covered up you would never see the water obviously it would get leaves and all sorts of crap in it uh, doing it the way we've done but you know I've tried to make it look a little bit realistic using chain link fence there to cover it up what I find is quite hilarious is that after asking for chain link fence for so long since launch pretty much I've been begging for a chain link fence um, the first time I use it isn't actually as a fence <laughs> which probably tells you all you to know about geekism and what we do here uh, we play games creatively uh, often at expense of um of gameplay so here we go we're using these um fountain pieces these work really nicely if you're looking for a technique for this there isn't really one i place placed loads of bricks and then uh, loads of rock even and then i'll take these fountain pieces and really just kind of follow the the cracks in the rocks so i start at the water base and come up and as i come up i I start off with the with the largest spout and then I slowly move up to the middle in spout and I just find the cr the cracks in the rocks and you find that it will quite naturally form and such was so far has turned out quite nicely having a little mess with the uh, with those terrain paints there I end up going back and using path for the most part because obviously you want your guests to walk through it I do think those are going to be quite useful even just for parking lots if that's the only thing we use it for in parking lots that'll be yeah that'll be fine here um we're going to start a couple of main street buildings so we are going to have a main street, uh, but it's going to be very much a studio's main street, which they're pretty much always sort of themed around city, uh, sort of New York style architecture for the most part. Uh, and also, obviously, I just want to play with the new stuff when obviously most of the new stuff in the game regarding building, at least, uh, uses this kind of uh, cityscape uh, uh, building style, which I think is, is pretty nice. 
again, I said this in my overview video, I, I think so they've made a few weird design choices regarding this this time. The couple of windows we've got are huge, but you know, we don't expect anything less. Um, but this, this, this piece here, this is one whole piece this is, uh, these two windows and the door. The door on its own is great, um, but you can't actually place it on its own, it's just this, this set of three. Uh, luckily they're very colourable. So uh, we can still get lots of variation. You can see the two the two fronts that I do do here use the same pieces but look very different because of the colours. Uh, originally I was going to go for a music shop, oh the monsters, um, with that trumpet there. I couldn't find any other instruments and kind of struggled to fill it. So this actually ends up being quite an occult store and that's mostly because the spooky's got some great small pieces. So I thought, you know what, hell, why not, let's do that. So we've got a, a golden, um, uh, sorry, a, a lamp, what's it called? A oh god. A ball. What the, what the hell is the ball called that, people, that they use to read the future? Fortune. Crystal. Crystal ball. There we go. That's the word I was trying to think of. God, what a brain fart. Uh, some cobwebs in there as well. Again, I don't really go mad on signage here because a lot of these buildings, I kind of want you to sort of wander past. This is the very start of the park. There's going to be no reason to come and stop here. All of the sort of guest services and stuff would actually sort of take place outside the park here. It would take place in the in the sort of welcome centre that, that we'll look at, hopefully look at doing eventually over the other side. By the point that you get here, you've got your wristband, you're ready to go and you're ready to rock and you're looking forward to the, a day in the park. So um, I didn't want to do any like guest services stuff. Um, the only thing I did put in is a, is a toilet. And again, trying to keep it realistic so we, we set it back a little bit. Uh, here you can see we've gone from that tarmac to the path. Very different shade, unfortunately. Uh, I was going to do... Oh, excuse me, I'm yawning my head off. It was a very long day yesterday getting all the, um, <laughs> getting all the studios pack videos out. I was going to do a slight curved street there, but um, looking back at some reference images, most of them, pretty much all of them, in fact, have a very straight main street, and you get that really sort of great palm-lined street that we're going to look at doing anyway. So I've gone back to having a, uh, a straight line there. Here's something a little bit different. So we've done a little bit of this kind of foliage creating images in pine wood. We wrote the word pine wood. Much lower scale though, much lower budget. Here I wanted the uh, the Geekism G. Uh, we're going to try and reference Geekism a few times through the park. You know, it's the idea is that this is that the brand of the park is is Geekism as a as a sort of larger brand. It's kind of a little bit of a uh, you know dream fulfillment for me, I guess, you know, <laughs> to see my uh, my name in lights, I guess, <laughs> sort of thing. Um, but I think it's quite a strong image and uh, you know the Geekism brand itself, I, I feel like it's quite a, quite a decent brand to, to use around the place so we're going to be using that in a few places uh, and one of those things we're going to do is have one of these uh, sort of flower beds uh, very much inspired by Jubilee's one uh, the Commando and, and Rubel did a great job with one of these with their Jubilee Gardens logo uh, luckily this one's a little bit easier to do because it's a uh, relatively stylized logo it just uses three colours um, actually go back and change this light I had to get my wife to come and help me with this because for some reason it just wasn't really clicking um, got to there and I was quite happy with it here a great tip by the way if you do this kind of thing uh, rotate the pieces as you put them down and then just select a random selection of them and lift them up a little and then another random selection and lift them down a little and it just gives you a little bit more sort of uh, natural movement to it here there's going to be a cut in a moment I think I start by putting down um, I put it on a slight angle by the way so that you can actually kind of tell what it is from the path although it's still quite hard to see to be fair this is a bit of a um, a useless prop to be honest as far as Tejid Cam is concerned. So I wanted to do a little bit of variation here so I used a different plant for the white. Unfortunately the colour, the white itself oh my god oh, excuse me, the white it was a really long night, I'm going to bed as soon as this video is done um, and the white itself isn't very bright so it actually looks quite green and also the, the height variation doesn't really work too well either so there's going to be a shortcut after Nicholas had a look at it there it is. <laughs> uh, we go back and use the uh, the other planting, and also we drag the lilac down a little bit darker there, so that the white stands out a little bit more. And I think it looks loads better. You actually can see what it is now. Um, this is still a bit of a work in progress. I kind of stick it out of the way. Again, one thing I wanted to do here is um, uh, one thing I've noticed about uh, the larger parks is they have stuff on the way out as well, and uh, it's kind of something I've noticed with Pinewood we haven't done, and, and smaller parks. You know, when you leave, you're lucky to get a sign that says thanks for coming. Um, whereas um, these bigger parks, I often have sort of flower beds and statues and things that are actually facing the exit so that when you come out, you're still getting that last little bit of magic, you're still getting that last little experience. So this is what that is going to be. Uh, you're, you're, if you, As you're walking into the park, you pretty much skip this, you'd, you'd look straight past it. Um, 
but if you're coming out, it'll be a nice thing. Maybe your last photo of the day. Oh yeah, let's go and get a photo by the geekies and flower bed type thing. You know, um, probably going to have to look at doing some sort of viewing platform up to this because it is from Tejicam, pretty much impossible to see. Oh, there's a bit of a cut there. Sorry, I'm um, just trying to cover, wrap this up in some stone. I'm knocking my mic there and everything. I'm such a pro. It's my first day at this. Sorry. Um, yeah, so that's kind of all we do with that and kind of leave it and, and come back to it later on. The last thing I'm going to do is go back into the park and do another um, another building. One thing I, I notice here is that I've got there's nothing underneath these. I, I did try and put the coconut pieces to create some mulch, but you could hardly see it, and it was just a kind of a, a waste of pieces to be honest. So I do actually go back and raise the. Uh, the, the actual grain itself up a little bit just to kind of give it a slightly darker um, underneath the flowers so it doesn't look like the flowers are floating. Again, we kind of leave that. I, I got I started to get a little bit fed up of it, so I'm going to come back later and uh, and deal with that afterwards. Uh, then we come back and do uh, some nice work here now using some of the studio parts. The part one thing I didn't mention actually, I actually started building this park before Studios Pack came out in the hopes that Studio Pack was good. Look at it, it is, so we're going to carry on. So the uh, the archway there and the, and the Geekism uh, globe thing uh, doesn't use any studio pieces. Because it wasn't out by then, I'm yawning again. Oh my word. We're nearly done, folks. We're nearly get, you're getting through this with me. <laughs> uh, like I said, I've just had great fun playing this game. I, I did yesterday. Um, it, it, the DLC dropped quite late, unfortunately. I was sort of sitting around waiting from about two o'clock because it's usually afternoon when it comes out. Uh, new fences. Oh, look at these, so good. Um, so I was waiting from around from about two o'clock. Uh, I don't think it actually dropped till about six. And I live stream on a Tuesday and still wanted to live stream. So I very quickly recorded. Well, I say quickly. I still try and do it as well as I can. But you know, quickly as I could, I recorded my. Uh, 1.6 overview and then I recorded my one uh, studios pack overview uh, but then it was time to stream so I didn't get a chance to edit them or render them or anything like that so we then streamed for two hours which was great we had loads of people in the chat over 500 people watching at one point which is a new record for me so I was really pleased with that um, that was really great really great feeling to have that many people watching uh, and then we were also joined by Silverette, Delay Designer and SP Ridley came in for a little chat as well about the pack. Uh, we had loads of fun, it was great to, uh, uh, to well one and a half straight stream I think it, we did in the end because I needed to get back to edit the videos. So I edited the videos, rendered them, uploaded them. I think I was all done for the night, uh, having been up at half five in the morning with uh, Xander, it was my turn to get up with him. Um, I think I was all done for the night at about 2am. So it was a long day, and then I was back up this morning at 8 a.m. to get started on this, basically, because uh, today I've got to record uh, this, which will go out today. This is coming out on the Wednesday. Um, uh, Subnautica, which I think may well be our last episode. I think we're nearly finishing that game now. Um, and then uh, Pinewood's uh, Friday video as well. That's all got to be done today. Uh, so yeah, another another long day in the life of a YouTuber. It's ridiculous, isn't it, the things I moan about. So I'm sitting here playing video games. What are you going to do? Uh, so here then, this building, I, I, it was originally started as quite a plain Main Street building, uh, but then I thought, you know, to toilets are something that you would often find at the very entrance to parks, and I wanted to try and keep them accessible but out of the way a little, uh, and that's what we end up doing here, and so we kind of start the idea of, a, of an alleyway. Um, and you have to kind of come around the alleyway to get to the toilets. They perhaps need a little bit more signage closer to the front of the area there because they probably end up being a little bit too hidden. <laughs> um, so here we go then, we're using these pieces again, we just sort of changed the colours a little bit, kind of keeping this the, bray, the browns and greys for now, uh, because you know these, these are the sort of building, you know they're often brick buildings. And then um, realise that this will be a corner building to be honest, so to, uh, go back here and make it a little bit funky. One nice thing is if you change the grid there to two, um, you can actually cover up one of the doors and you get like a nice door on a sideway there which I think works out quite nicely. You could even change that front one and just have side entering doors there if you wanted to. So here, yep, yeah, there we go. Just about to say that my uh, scale starts to get the better of me again. It's something I have to constantly, constantly deal with is uh, scale getting away from me in this game. We can go a little bigger with this park um, because, purely because it's budget and it's American and they do things a little bit bigger than us. Uh, in the UK, but still, um, yeah, sizing and, uh, and, and scale is still something that I really am trying to stay on top of. It is so difficult to do though because the stuff in Planet Coaster is huge, <laughs> um, especially the new cornice pieces. It takes me a little while to get the path doing what I want to do here, uh, but we get there in the end. Yeah, there's some new cornices. 
to new eaves and they're, they're great they're really nice the one i've used the first one already on that left building there and that's pretty much that's a great size to be honest with you this is going to be an anchor shop for a while it, it ends up being a really random shop i think um yeah those ones on the left they're, they're pretty good size and obviously we can build our own using wooden pieces and, and, and obviously we, which we have been doing for a long time now but you know this is a studios pack park uh, you know we started this to sort of really show off the studios pack to begin with at least so i do want to go through and try and use them as much as that sort of stuff as much as i can i apologize we're just having a real good look at a trash can here for some reason there we go i felt like it was really worth studying that trash can um and then we start the path on the other side and then again this will begin the uh, the sort of uh, palm lined tree uh, palm lined street my real next thought and something I would like a bit of help with actually is whether or not this park gets a weenie um, look at that awful tarmac there, it doesn't work at all does it, never mind, um, whether or not this park gets a weenie because I personally can't think of these parks usually having one, I think Disney Studios has that huge Fantasia hat um, but I oh. I'll have a think while I yawn, I, I'm sure that Universal doesn't, I'm sure it has um it just sort of kind of loops around the lake instead and part of me thinks that the idea of the studio lots doesn't necessarily fit the idea of a weenie so i think what i might do instead one thing i do remember um seeing um at these parks is they have like a fake hollywood hills where they have the hollywood sign i think a fake geekism hills with the, with word geekism done out like the hollywood sign would be pretty neat so i i think we might um we might do that and not necessarily treat it as a weenie but treat it as kind of like the end of the park and you kind of go left for some rise and right for some other and, and keep it that way rather than having uh too too much of a, a crazy layout these parks the ones i visited anyway are actually relatively small as far as high budget parks go um usually they have sort of eight nine attractions and uh, most of those attractions are indoor dark rides or screen based attractions so uh, foot, footprint uh, is actually on the smaller side compared to some of the larger parks like uh, you know disney um or uh, uh, you know a bit bigger parks in europe and uh, yeah so 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 scale wise it's, it's just something we're going to try and keep on top of and, and we're, we're probably looking at about five or six attractions i think in this park namely the backlock studio tour uh, the, the which is going to be themed around the movies game uh, the subnautica robo arm ride the surviving mars coaster and then probably we'll look at using a few flats to kind of replicate the idea of screen rides thing you know like in, in uh, you get things like star tours and um, uh, the Terminator cinema experience, that kind of thing. Um, so those will probably just make facades for a few different rides and, uh, and have flats in them that people can go in and ride. So that, that, that's kind of what I'm thinking there is, is how we do it. Uh, and, then, and then we'll be shifting across to a sort of city walk style area where we have a few restaurants and hotels and things like that. Uh, I'm really psyched for this. Um, like I say, it's going to be running alongside Pinewood. If I have a busy week and I only get one video done, uh, it will be a Pinewood video. That's still our main series. It's still the thing I enjoy doing most. So um, yeah, here I play around with the idea of having a studio set and i was thinking that i could make him and i'm looking desperately for the bits of flag that we got a while back i think in the summer update he might have been or spring update and i was going to attach some bits of flag to his back and he's, he's been looking at some flags now i've kind of gone off on a tangent I'm going to attach some of those bits and make him look a little bit like superman coming out of the building and then i was thinking of doing like a bank robbery and everything and i thought no do you know what um these are animatronics they wouldn't just be sitting there people would go and break them and all sorts of stuff so i changed my mind <laughs> um this shop ends up selling uh, oversized clapperboards and gigantic lollipops, which is quite neat. So there's some uh, glamour shots. I I'm really pleased with this. I think it's turned out really quite nicely. It's great to have a bit of a different scale and a different budget and a different style completely to Pinewood. Uh, I think having both running alongside each other will really help with my creativity. So uh, now this is recorded, this is going to get rendered while I have some lunch and then I'm going to dive into Pinewood and have a go at all the studio stuff in Pinewood. I can't wait to go back into my backstages and have parking lots and, and have another go at all that sort of stuff. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you can give us a like. It really does help out the channel. And if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Any thoughts, or queries or suggestions, you can pop those down in the comments. And if you fancy a chat, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at John T. Sparrow. If you'd like to join in with the Geekism community, you can do so over on our Geekism Discord server. You'll find the link for that in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.